So I'm going to show you how you can control the photos that Google shows for your business. Now, of course, that affects your inquiries, affects how customers view your business. They have a perception about your business based on those very photos that Google's serving up. So I'm going to show you how you can control that. In fact, if you can't control the photos that Google's choosing, then how can you control your business? Now, if you're here for the first time, then make sure you subscribe down below. Make sure you give it a bell or alert so that it lets you know when the next video is being updated. And then, of course, you'll be able to not miss on these tips and this information that's going to benefit your business and branding. Now, of course, photos do affect people's perception of your business. And if you're in charge of your branding, you're going to want to make sure you've got full control over those photos. So how did I come across this idea of trying to find how to control the photos that Google chooses? Well, it was down to a video I've recently been making a series you may already be following that's looking at helping a business grow and get set up in the right way. So you may have already been watching that. And in during that filming process, I just had that question, is it possible to control what Google decides to choose? So when it selects the photos from the ones you've uploaded, apart from the logo, what control do you have? And I thought, well, that'll make a great experimental video, which is what this is about today. So this video starts out as an experiment to see if I can manipulate the very pictures that Google is going to show. But as you'll see, if you're prepared to wait to the end, you'll see we get some great results. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how you can have whatever photo you want showing wherever you want it showing. Now that's great control over your business and something that probably most people never consider when it comes to putting in their business photos into Google My Business. So watch this video right through to the end because there's some really interesting results you definitely won't want to miss. And give it a thumbs up so others can be aware that this is a useful video. So let's jump straight in and I'll show you how this experiment panned out. So I've done a search here for sports centres and just taken the first one, Oxley Sports Centre. And if you specifically search for a particular sports centre, you'll then get this knowledge panel come up. And you'll notice that at the moment they're showing three photos. One's a photo of inside, one's a photo of outside and one's the map area. Now, if I do another search for golf courses, you notice a slightly, if I flick between the two, a slightly different proportion. So this is a square version of a golf course. This is the map area of where the golf course is, and this is outside. So what do these have in common? Uh, see photos, see outside and map. See photos, see outside and map. So that seems to be a formula. Let's just try it on one more thing. Let's do um, flower shops. So I'll show you how I do it. So I type in flower shops. Let's take this one here, it's just a random. And you'll find that you don't get that knowledge panel here, you need to actually use the name in Google. So if I go search Google, and then we then get this up. So this comes up again with the square, see photos, the outside and the map. So that seems a current format at the moment. So what I want to know is how do I control which photo is shown here? And can I control this one? And I've seen it before where there's no maps. I've also seen it before where the logo's here. So these are the challenges I'm going to take on today. So let's see if we can control this. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to go into Photoshop. So I've produced a logo for my pretend Aberdeen golf shop. So I'm going to upload that first of all. So if I go to my Aberdeen Golf Shop and if I go into uh, so we've got here choose a photo for a logo so I've uploaded this already but for some reason it doesn't always notice it so there you go I've uploaded this logo I'm going to click on that I'm going to set it as my logo set logo and now that is my logo okay so if I go to my shop here you would expect the logo to appear let's see So it doesn't appear there as such, which is disappointing. Let's just try, if I did a search for Aberdeen Golf Shop. So again, I don't own a knowledge panel as of yet, but it does now pick up the logo here. And I can view my profile if I want to, which I can click that. 
and this gives me there you go so I've now got my logo appearing and I've also got my map appearing uh, this is totally made up by the way this was done in a previous video before the recent window cleaning one so I, I've got control so far over the logo I've got control over the map now what we're going to do is let's just compare that can I get the map up here can I get these two can I control these two so what I'm going to do in Photoshop is I'm going to make it easy for us I'm going to number some images let me just bring in um, an image let's go um, bring one image here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize that to a sensible size let's do um, 1600 by 1200 so it's a nice sensible size so there you go that's my image it's still a nice size and I'm going to brand it So I'm going to brand it with this as well just so it looks really cool just shrink that down a bit because that's quite large so we've got this kind of branding going on in the corner and for our reference and this is where it's quite exciting we're going to just give it a number so I'm going to call it number one let's do this in a nice sensible green okay so we'll call this like whole one let's just get this down in size to let's say 60 there you go so what we're doing is we're branding some photographs we're going to call them number one so what we'll know is we'll know when the photo comes up we'll know which one it is that it's picked but I'll put these in order I'll upload these in order as well so just bear with me one second as I save these so I'm just going to bring in some more photographs and just make them fit. So there you go. So you can now see we've got these five golf images all branded, all numbered one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to upload those now and then see what happens and where they go. So let's do this. So I'm going to go to my Aberdeen golf shop and I'm going to go to photos which I'm in um, I don't know why you see I've had this before where it keeps saying choose a logo when you've already got a logo so I'm not sure there's some type of um, issue there with uh, Google but anyway we're going to upload some photos so you can drag and drop them across the reason I'm going to do that is I want to make sure that we we know which order we uploaded them in so golf one okay and you can just see the one on there so that's useful and then we're going to go golf two so the thing is with these things I like to kind of do a scientific type of experiment um, it's easy to just assume things but sometimes there's a science behind this and once you understand the order and the way in which things work then you are much more likely to be able to then manipulate it so that you've got more control. So sometimes Google doesn't give you all the information and it's just down to people like ourselves to just take a little bit of time to understand it. And once you understand it, of course, you can teach it. And that's the reason why we have these videos. This is why people subscribe to me because they want to understand a bit more about controlling their Google My Business. And these are the types of things that are going to help that. So you can see now we've uploaded one to five. Uh, we've got all the photos. So let's see what happens. If I go to my golf shop here, I'm going to refresh it. So nothing at the moment. Okay which is unbelievable, isn't it? So it seems like, first of all, what do we learn from this? We learn that it seems that Google's got a bit of a caching issue. Well, let's just add a cover photo. Well, let's do that next then. It's saying here, um, choose a photo for your logo, but I've chosen a photo for my logo. So why ask for that when it's got it? Anyway, let's choose a cover photo. Let's do that. Now with a cover photo they're a bit different and it could be that this is what we're after. So I'm going to go for the recommended size for a cover photo which I think I've got here as being 1024 by 
or we can go for that 2120. So I'll go to Photoshop, new. Now what I'll do is I'll just take that, let's just take actually that. But what we'll do is we'll change it the other way around. So this won't have a number on because it's a cover photo. And what I'll do is I'm going to swap this the other way around, change it slightly by making it fill that area there. So there you go, so it is quite different to the other photo. And this is our cover photo. I'm gonna call it cover one. So it's a different shape, I'm gonna click on that and open that. Now remember this has no number on the logo and that's been uploaded. Now we've given that our cover. So the cover's gone, unlike the logo. Let's now see how that affects things. So at this point I was disappointed that I wasn't getting the results from the experiment that I wanted. But on the other hand, from your comments and from combinations of feedback with Google My Business, I was also aware that Google My Business can sometimes take time to make changes. So I decided to leave it a couple of days and then I thought I'd check back and this is the results. We'll go straight back into the video. And has now come to fruition. So we've had the photographs here. I'm going to just put this to the side for a moment. So we're going to refer back to in a minute, see which photos have been put where. But if we just go to the information, we want to view this on search and we want to view it on maps. So those are the two things we're interested in. And we'll now see how many of these photos are showing up and where they're showing. So notice on the Google search itself, you get the knowledge panel. So it picks up the logo, which is great. It picks up the map area. So we've got that control and then see photos. Now this photo here is the cover photo. So if you want to control that photo there, then that would be whatever you choose to give the cover photo. So you can edit that at any point and you can always select a different photograph or upload it. But you've got control in effect over the map itself as the areas that you've suggested uh, that you cover and the cover photo covers that. So that's the purpose of the cover photo. And of course we've seen the logo. Okay, let's just carry on down. It then picks up the next photograph. So I haven't done any um, posts on here yet, but because there's no posts, it still wants to put something out there. So it puts the next photograph. Notice it took two days before this came up. And that is then the next photograph, the very last one I uploaded, which is uh, number one on the golf club. And we can't see it there, but it'll be number one. Now, if I click on that, you'll notice there it's number one. So this one here is being picked up here. So you've got now control of knowing exactly where those three photos go. Your last photo you uploaded goes here, the logo and the cover. So that's quite useful for controlling my knowledge panel. So it's very easy sometimes to, to feel a bit confused, but there are a few other things you can do too. So the other thing we did is we opened up the Google Maps. Now the cover photo has no number on and that's being used as a much wider area on the map itself. And then again, you've got this, the last photo was uploaded, was this one over here. So again, we see how it's the, the, the logo is uh, used sometimes, it doesn't seem to appear to be used there. But on the map section of American Golf Shop, you've got the cover and you've got the latest photo. Now there is something else you can do as well. If we go back to here, If you just do a search for Aberdeen golf shops and you notice that we're coming up before, if you notice again, the cover photo is used for what's shown here. So once again, you've got control over what's shown here, which is shown here too. So that's good. And if you click on this, you'll notice this changes again because now it's used here as well, like an advert at the bottom. And you can also
can also get a detailed information about Aberdeen Golf Shop or about your golf and you'll just notice something else as well if you go to just a standard search instead of going from these links just do a, a standard link yourself view all so now you get the map and it's just outside the map pack at the moment without any optimization but I'm going to click on that you notice now you get the logo up here but instead of the cover this is another format that often we don't see so this is again got some similarities to what we had before but you notice there is a bit of a difference between the Google search that provides the map and the map search itself so that's quite limited we've seen that uh, again just with the cover but on Google itself it's quite different because you get now the richness of all the photographs and let's just analyze and so it's using the cover photo here which has got no number and then we've got here several more photographs now if we align these up so we can see so we've got the cover photo here we've got the logo here and then we've got the next photo here and then the next one followed here and the next one here and then interestingly it doesn't then follow suit it actually selects one that's a couple more down so that's interesting that you get now the next two or three and then a, then a random selection um, and that gives you a bit more control again so what's the purpose of this well what we're trying to do is we're just wanting to be in control of how these photos it could be that you want specific photos to be here and obviously the cover is the one that is going to be the most important photo other than your logo but I would continually um, upload photos that you want to be seen on here as well because these are the photos that will attract people so let me just give an example if I go to flower shops and you've got attractive photos here but let's go to this one here no photos just that does that attract someone probably not I go to here these photos here now it could be that these photos are the ones that you want everyone to see but you want to be selective don't you what if you've got pictures of of something that isn't as attractive as the other photos then you might want to just update those so your latest ones it looks like they're the ones at the moment that are going to be selected there and that was the purpose of this experiment really was to fully understand how you can control the photos that are being shown in Google results so hopefully that's been useful and you'll use that as a way of promoting more on your website so the experiment worked. You can be in charge of the photos that Google chooses. And this is really powerful because now you can make sure that your business is reflecting what you consider is important. And pictures are one of the most valuable ways of doing that. Now, you may remember I mentioned earlier in the video that this experiment was really piggybacking on the fact that we were looking at photos for LaRue, LaRue Window Cleaning Services, which is an ongoing series of videos that I'm currently producing. Now, if you want to know where that video was and, and particularly which bit I was referring to, and it's an excellent video because it goes into a bit more about how you can get your photos taken out of Yelp or Facebook or even Instagram. I know a lot of you enjoyed that part of the video where you can actually take your photos, your business photos that you've put in Instagram, and I show you how you can then download them and upload them back into Google My Business. So if you want to know how that worked and what particular part of the video that was, then if you head off to here, you'll find that in that particular part of the series. But if you like the idea of just having general optimization tips for 2021, then this video is definitely one you don't want to miss. 13 ways to optimize your Google My Business. I'll see you there.